In my last video, I talked about how you can gain wishlists on Steam using external sources. But today, I want to focus on internal methods. And by internal, I'm basically talking about the Steam algorithm itself, and how you can make your game fall in its good grace. Before we start, here is a disclaimer. Number one is language. A lot of indie devs leave localization for last. This also means that they will not add these languages to their store page until closer to release. This is an absolute mistake. If you're planning to localize your game to multiple languages, add them to your store page right at the start of your wishlist campaign. That way, you will gain extra traffic right from the start. Also, this kind of forces you to localize your game because you have already made that promise, which is a good thing. And don't just add languages to the sidebar. Localize the description and the store assets. If a Japanese person views your store page, make sure they see this. In fact, make it bigger. Or just replace the English with Japanese. Number two, capsule art. The capsule art is the second most important thing when it comes to your wishlist campaign. Language was first because having multiple languages increases your number of impressions. A good cover art turns impressions into store page visits. The user experience happens in this exact order, so we have to do it in the right order too. Best way to improve your capsule art design is by browsing Steam and finding out what catches your eye and try and learn from that. Also, different capsule arts have to be made differently, especially the small capsule. SteamDB is a good website to view a game's store assets. Use it to your advantage. Another thing you can do, take a screenshot of the Steam's new release section and edit in your own capsule art just to see how it compares to the others. Number three, first four screenshots. If you hover your mouse on a game, Steam shows you a quick slideshow of the first four screenshots. Also, when someone visits your store page, usually the first thing they do is to look at the first four screenshots before they look at anything else. And thus, these screenshots have to be the absolute best. And there needs to be variation. Don't just show different angles of the same scene. No, every screenshot needs to show something unique. One of them needs to show atmosphere. Another one needs to show boss fight or user interface or anything that defines a unique element of your game. Hollow Knight does a good job when it comes to color variation. First one is yellow, second one is green, third one is red, and fourth one is purple. Cuphead, on the other hand, is really good at showing different animation phases and aspects of the game. Number four, trailer description and tags. When it comes to your trailer, people mostly watch it by skipping around in it. Most people don't watch the entire video at least not when they first discover the game. So your trailer needs to be a slideshow that shows random elements of your game. The description has a similar function. Nobody cares about the description itself. They come for the GIFs, which is a lower frame rate version of your trailer. And you need to have at least three very good GIFs that show the key elements of your game. Also, try and fade your GIFs with a Steam background. It makes it look more professional. As for tags, they play an important role in the Steam algorithm. But here's the thing. Tags need to be updated once in a while. A lot of tags, such as indie or casual, don't have much of an effect. Get rid of these tags. Instead, use tags that are more genre and theme specific. And once a month or two, change them around and see if it affects your daily store page traffic. I hope you learned something from this video. There is another internal method of gaining wishlists, and that is Steam Nextfest. And guess what? I have made an entire video report on my experience with this event. Check it out.